Good to be in the Lord's house this morning. Amen. Good to see all of you this morning. Would you stand with us as we lift our voices, turn our minds and hearts to our Heavenly Father. Worthy is the Lamb. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came. Amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the milk you sent. Watching in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb. See. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail piercings. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Sing to him, church. Worthy is the Lamb. State of Baptist Church, and my name is Brad Ball, I'm the pastor. It's my joy and privilege to welcome you to God's house, and again, we're thankful uh, to see you here today. We're thankful to have you online, and if you're online, just let us know who's watching, and so we're just so grateful to have you here. We're here for one reason, really, to meet with God and praise the name of Jesus. That's why we're here. Meet with God and praise the name of Jesus. And pray that God would speak to our hearts while we do that. And so we're just so glad to have you here this morning. Let me just remind you we're here. We want to see your life changed by the gospel and God's word. And we believe that changes lives. And that's what we want to be passionate about. So let me just encourage you with a couple announcements. We have Trunk or Treat. It'll be October 30th, 530 to 8. Uh, there's sign-ups just right through here on the, the bulletin board. Uh, there's many ways you can serve. We'll need people doing parking, food. Uh, you can do a, this year we're looking at you can do a trunk or you can do a game. You're like, hey, I don't want to do a trunk, but man, I'd love to do a game. Do a game. Whatever whatever creativity God uh, gives to you, and some of you are really creative, and you'll come up with something. Whatever way God uh, leads you in that, um, you know, we're just going to do it for one reason, uh, to love our community love families, give children a safe environment, and point them to Christ. That's why you do things like that. And so, again, uh, if you can help in any way, please let us know. And then next Saturday, uh, we'll remind you, we're going to do Lawrence 316, where we go out and pray in neighborhoods. 
and just put uh, the Jesus DVD on uh, the door. We're just going to pray through. Uh, we're not going to go knock on the door. Uh, we're just going to go through and pray for homes, pray for those people in those homes. Now, if you see somebody, you'll talk to them. Uh, but we're going to do that. We'll let you rem remind you. We'll do that next Saturday just for an hour. It's getting fall, nice weather. Amen? Uh, nice weather to get out and uh, uh, instead of being 95 degrees and 100% humidity. And so we'll be doing that next Saturday, just going through our neighborhoods and praying for uh, people. So let's go, Lord, in prayer. Uh, I'm going to ask Brother Caleb uh, if you just get a mic and uh, just lead us in prayer. Uh, the Lord to speak to us this morning. Church, let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, uh, thank you for allowing us to be in your house this morning. Lord, I thank you for all <clears throat> my brothers and sisters here with us this morning and how much of a blessing it is to be in your house with your people. Lord, I pray for the van this morning as we um, try to lead people in worship to you that it would not be about any of us, but that we would just truly and honestly worship you in the right spirit. <clears throat> Lord, I pray for Brother Brad this morning as he brings a message that you just anoint him and that you would speak through him. It wouldn't be him up here, but it would be your word, and you would open our hearts and minds to hear your word, and that you would just use that to draw us closer to you, that we would walk with you in our daily lives. We would take it out, whatever we take from the message, and we would just use that to be more like you so that the world would see you through us, that we would be lights to the world, Lord pray that in this next week as we go out that <clears throat> we would just have a desire to live for you that we would um, <clears throat> that we would you know be faithful in being in your word and drawing close to you daily in your name I pray amen amen church would you stand with us <laughs> I count on one thing The same God that never fails Will not fail me now He won't fail me now And in the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out You're working all things out Oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will. That's right. I count on one thing, the same God that never fails, will not fail me now, you won't fail me now, and in the waiting, the same God who's never late, is working all things out, is working all things out, oh yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will for all my days. Oh, yes, I will. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. That nothing can stand against, and I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. That nothing can stand against, and I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. That nothing can stand against, and I choose to praise, to glorify. Glorify the name of all 
This morning, church. Amen. Have you been to Jesus in the cleansing fire? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace? Hour, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? In the blood of the Lamb, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? In the blood of the Lamb, are you garments spotless on the white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? him church amen have you counted the stars in the heavens have you walked the circumference of the earth have you measured the boundaries of the do you tremble at the word of your God? Have you uncovered the source of the thunder? Have you tamed the crash and mighty sea? Have you defied the force of gravity? Do you tremble at the word of God? Wise will hear him and obey his word. Long and blessed will be their days upon the earth. Who will perish in the folly of his ways? Do you tremble? Have 
Have you considered the scope of eternity in the light of unwavering truth? Have you regarded the works of the strong and mighty hands? Do you tremble at the word of God? God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Sam and, and Dan, for leading us in uh, worship. That's a powerful last song that they just sung. Uh, if you do need an outline, they'll get you one. Just raise your hand. All righty, kids, ready for children's church? Praise the Lord. Look at all these kids. Amen. Good to see y'all. All right. Praise the Lord uh, for the next generation. And uh, praise the Lord for them being in God's house. You can give uh, many ways. You can give in the house, in the front, in the back. You can give online. And drop it in the mail or put it in, give it to the office. Again, we thank you uh, for your for your gifts. This week we were able to uh, feed the whole West Lawrence High School football team and their coaches, and I was able to uh, share with them um, uh, the gospel. Actually, uh, actually, uh, you'd have to ask what a how do you speak on this? But I actually talked to him about blessed are the meek. And how we need to be controlled by Christ. And uh, you play sports, you need to learn how to play under control. And you need to be controlled by Christ. You need to be coached controlled by Christ. You know, we need to live controlled by Christ. So, again, thank you all for giving. Uh, if you remember Tuesday morning, early first period, I'll be speaking to the Bible class out there at the high school, too, this week. So if you remember that, because uh, I haven't decided just yet or haven't felt led by the Lord which uh, uh, topic I will hit that will probably be hot in culture. So just pray for me on that. Last year I preached on the biblical answer to racism. So I may hit that topic again. I don't know. I haven't felt direction from the Lord, so just ask for that. So let's go, Lord, in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful that you shed your blood for us so that we might have eternal life. Wow. We didn't deserve it. We don't definitely didn't earn it. 
But Lord, as we move at, at looking at your word, may we tremble at it. Lord, help us not to deal with it flippantly today. Father, may you speak to our hearts. Lord, I pray that you would just uh, do what only you can do. Lord, may you just apply the blood to my tongue and I say only what needs to be said. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today we want to talk about the merciful attitude. The merciful attitude. Some of you know the story in Luke 10 where there was a man, he was walking from Jerusalem to Jericho. He was uh, walking down the road, and you remember what happened to him? He was robbed, he was mugged, he was beaten, and left for dead. Priest walked up on the scene and saw the, the man over there crying for help, bloodied and wounded, and he walked on the other side of the road. A Levite, which would have been kind of like a theologian of the day, he, he saw the man over there laying, bleeding, and, and crying for help, and he decided to walk on the other side of the road. Then there was a Samaritan who is a bitter enemy and arch rival of the Jews. And he sees the man and realizes, okay, if I don't do something, this man is going to die. So he kind of cleans him up, bandages him up, takes him down the, to the local inn, and talks with the owner there and says, hey, would you take care of this guy? You, you let, Give him a place to stay, give him what he needs, and when I come back through town, put it on my bill, and I'll pay for it. Jesus says in Luke 10, he says, Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell to the hand of the robbers? He said, The one who showed mercy to him. Then Jesus said, Go and do likewise. And so today we want to talk about the merciful attitude in Matthew 5, 7. And so let's read the text, let's read... Uh, where we've started from in verse 3, and we'll come up to verse 7 today, and that's where we'll camp out for the rest of the time. It says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy target of this message is for us to understand this. Mercy is love or compassion in action. Love or compassion in action. That's what the Good Samaritan did. Love or compassion in action. Now just to remind you, blessed means favored by God. He's saying blessed is the one, you know, you want to know the, the person that God approves? Blessed is the merciful. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Remember these kingdom attitudes for all Christ followers to live out, and they're pretty much a progression, like building a staircase. Each one adds on to the next one as we live them out. And so let me remind you what they mean. Poor in spirit means, hey, we got to admit what? We're spiritually bankrupt. We're spiritually poverty, and our total dependence has to be upon God. Where it says, blessed are those who mourn, he's saying, man, we've got to grieve over our sin and our lives, which leads to genuine repentance. Now remember, meekness is strength or power under the control of Christ. That's the biblical word there. Then last week we looked at Christ followers are to have a healthy spiritual appetite, how we're to hunger and thirst for righteousness. And remember, I'm just going to say the the sentence by Tozier, just to remind you, what are you hungering and thirsting for? He says, Tozier said, you can what? You can have as much of God as you want. 
You can have as much of God as you want. It just depends on what you hunger and thirst for. Now this word mercy here is a beautiful word. It's in the Old Testament. It's almost hard to reduce to one word. Now many times in the Old Testament, they might even translate it loving kindness, or they might translate it faithful love, but it's a very uh, an impactful word which embraces motive and action, doing something. It does not imply feeling sympathetic or just compassionate. It's a compassion or a love that's moved to do something. It's where you have the ability to almost literally get inside somebody's skin and look at life from their perspective. And that's what the Samaritan did. He saw this guy beaten, mugged, bloody, robbed, and he was like, man, that guy needs help. He's got to be hurting. And he started thinking from his perspective, and he did something. That is mercy. That's compassion and action. So all these kingdom attitudes, just to remind you, hey, they're to show us how to live as citizens of the kingdom of heaven. They're to show us how to live as Christ follows. I don't know about you, but these are a good test for how you're living as a Christ follower. I don't know about you, but maybe you had not been as convicted as much as I have, but man, these are, <laughs> these are convicting little just, you could say they're almost one-liners or one sentence, but man, there's, when you start studying it, man, there is a lot in there that God is saying to us and how to live as Christ followers. And none of us are perfect here. But I mean, as we go, keep going through, it's like, oh, I need to, yeah, I wasn't that there. I need to work on that there. I need to. And so they're a great test for us to remind how to live because, again, we live in a culture that's totally opposite than the Sermon on the Mount, totally opposite of these kingdom attitudes. And so Joseph's son said this, how far are you prepared to go in your commitment to Christ? Remember, some only get two steps on the rung. They never make it to meekness. See, I think this is all about how far am I going to go in my law walk with Christ? How far am I willing to go? How much do I want to know of God? How much do I want to seek Him? And part of that, I think, it impacts on how we live. So today we're going to look at just two sections in this, this merciful attitude. Number one, we're going to look at examples of the merciful. Examples of the merciful. I'm just going to give you two examples, one from the Old Testament, one from the New Testament. Number one, you got David. I'm going to show you a picture of really uh, mercy. It's in uh, 1 Samuel 24, verses 9 through 11. It says this, David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of the people who say, Look, David intends to harm you. You can see with your own eyes that the Lord has handed you over to me today in the cave. And someone advised me to kill you, but I took pity. I took mercy on you and said, I won't lift a hand against my Lord since he is the Lord's anointed. Just to give you the context, David and his men were hiding in this cave. Saul walked into the cave to go to the bathroom. David walked up. His men said, hey, man, he's right here. He's yours. And he went up and did what? He cut a little bit of, off his robe there. But he says, hey, but I didn't kill you. goes on to say, recognize that I've committed no crime or rebellion. I have, haven't sinned against you, even though you are hunting me down to take my life. See, Saul was hunting him down. David had him dead to rights. He, Saul didn't know David and his men were in there. He could have killed them like that, but he had mercy and compassion on him. Because he realized, okay, he's the king. God has put him in that position right now. Who had already been anointed king, to be king? David did. Saul just hadn't given up kingship and david showed him mercy now new testament example ought to be very easy who do we want to see jesus okay <laughs> he's the one he's our example of showing mercy now let's go to matthew 9 verses 9 through 13 and see just one of the many pictures of jesus as mercy 
So as Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. He's the RS guy, and he said to him, follow me, and he got up and followed him. He left his, again, RS people were very, very wealthy back then. And so while he was reclining at the table in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came to eat with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees, who would have been the religious people today, saw this, they asked the disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Now when he heard this, he said, it's not those who are well who need a doctor, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means, he says. Verse 13, I desire what? Mercy not sacrifice. For I didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners. See, Jesus showed mercy to the down and out, the poor, the outcasts, the tax collectors who nobody liked, uh, because most of they were Jews who had given in to Romans to be, get paid by the Roman government, so they were looked at down. He, he, he hung out with a riffraff. He even showed uh, uh, love in the gospel to prostitutes. That's why many people called him what? A devil and a glutton. Because he hung out with the people who some would have said the scum of the earth. And he showed them mercy and pointed them to salvation so that they might come to know Christ. See, Jesus, if you want to see a picture of mercy, just read the Gospels. You'll see mercy. You'll see love and compassion in action every single day in the life of Jesus. And so those are just a couple examples. Now let's talk about the marks of the merciful. The marks of the merciful. What are we to be showing in our lives? There's five marks that I want to give you. Five marks that I think if we live out this attitude that are going to be shown in our life. Number one, we show mercy to others. And it is evidence that we have received mercy. MacArthur said mercy is an integral to God's redemptive work of man. He says, from the time of the fall, man has had no way to come to God except through Christ's redemptive work. The the Greek word here uh, for mercy in this text is used in the New Testament, and it's also used in the Greek Old Testament, which is the Septuagint. It was used over 500 times. So, I mean, you see this word mercy everywhere. Now, what's a a verse that shows us mercy that comes into our lives from God? Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. It says what? But God, who is what? Rich in mercy. Because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive with Christ, even though we were dead in trespasses, but saved by grace. See, mercy, when it comes to between you and God, God doesn't give us what we deserve. Yeah. What do I deserve? Hell. Why? I'm a sinner. But because of God's mercy, He offers what? Salvation. He offers eternal life. So let me just share you the gospel through these Beatitudes. Because you've got to come to place. If you're going to come to know Christ, you've got to come to place where you realize that you're spiritually bankrupt. You've got to realize, hey, I have nothing in me to get to heaven. I can't earn my way to heaven. But I've got to be totally dependent upon God. That is faith. Belief in God and Christ is where you totally surrender and put your faith and trust in Christ and you depend upon Him. But you also must repent. You've got to come to a place where you realize, man, I'm a sinner, man, and I can't earn my way to heaven. And because of that sin, hey, it leads to death. And because of that sin, I am broken. And I've got to come to a place of repentance. What's repentance? A change of mind, which leads to change of attitude, behavior, and lifestyle. But to come to know Christ, what do you have to do? You've got to give up control. You've got to give up control. 
And when you give up control, you receive and experience the mercy of God. By you putting your faith and trust in Him, it says, by grace are you saved through what? Faith. You experience that through faith. How does that come yours? You call on Christ and ask Him to save you. Say, hey, Lord, I'm ready to follow you. Lord, I give you up the control of my life. I give you the, the remote control. My life is yours. And when that happens, you receive mercy. And once you receive mercy, it'll be evidenced in your life. Why? Because people will see it. And you want to show it. Number two, we show mercy because God is merciful. Another mark is we show mercy. Why? Because God is merciful. Jesus is merciful. Now again, we can't show mercy until we receive mercy. Once you receive the mercy of God through salvation, then you can show love and compassion in action to others. Every single day. See, mercy is an essential quality of God. God, because of His mercy and loving kindness, He saved you, saved me, and He saved those online, and whoever will come to place and repent and put their faith and trust in Christ. Because God is merciful. Ephesians 3, I mean, Exodus 34, 6, one of the great passages in the Old Testament says, what the Lord is what? A merciful and gracious God, I love this, slow to anger and abounding in faithful love and truth. Because of God's mercy and truth, He doesn't want anybody to perish. Man, He wants people to come to know Him. If God wasn't a merciful God, there'd be nobody in the building today. <laughs> there'd be nobody here. And because God is merciful, we ought to show mercy. Because why? Every morning, you and I woke up this morning and what? We experienced the mercies of God. Lamentation says, great is thy faithfulness. 2 Corinthians 1, 3, God is referred to the God of mercies. You know Romans 12, 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by what? The mercies of God. That why? Because of the mercy of God, because you've experienced the mercy of God, that you present your body as what is a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable one to God. Man, because you show, we're to show mercy because God has been merciful to us. Luke 6.36 says this, Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Because God has shown us mercy, we're to show mercy also. Jesus expects us to show mercy. See, once you receive it, it's going to be evidence. And we show this mercy. Why? Because God has shown us mercy. Number three, third mark is this. We show mercy because we're going to need mercy in the future. We're all going to need it. All of us. James 2.13 says this, For judgment is without mercy to the one who has not shown mercy. But Mercy, what, triumphs over judgment. Now, we live in a very judgmental world today. We really do. I mean, there's cancel culture. There's people judging people and hurling insults and accusations on social media and all this junk anywhere and everywhere you go. It's... I think we'd all agree that we've, we live in a pretty judgmental country right now, in a judgmental world. The question is, what are you going to do? Are you going to steep to their level and play in the mud and throw mud back at them? Or you can try to look to God, cross over into the supernatural, and extend a mercy. See, the opposite of mercy is anger. You can give them anger, or you can give them mercy. See, being godly is not giving justice, because we're not the judge, right? No, God is the judge. And so we're to show mercy. Why? We are going to need it in the future. Now let me give you a negative example of uh, not extending mercy. Okay? Because we're going to need mercy. You may know the story, but in Matthew 18, 21, it's the parable of the unforgiving servant. 
And in the beginning of that, Peter approaches Jesus, and if you remember, he says, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother? And he says seven times, because Peter thinks seven is the number for perfection and wholeness and completion. And Jesus said, what? No, you're to forgive him, what? Seventy times. Seven. And then Jesus tells Peter about a parable about the kingdom of God. And remember, there was this guy, I don't know how he owned, uh, owed all this money, but 10,000 talents would have been billions of dollars. And he comes to the king and the master, and he plea, the king and the master says, you must sell everything you have, you've got to sell your wife and your kids, and he's like, he's like, king, I don't have this money. And he begs for mercy and compassion, and if you know the story, he has compassion on him, and released him. What did the man do? Man goes out very quickly, finds a guy that owns him, owes him some money, which would have been just maybe a thousand or two when he owed a billion or more. And he goes up to the guy and chokes him and says, you better pay me right now what you owe me. Or I'm going to throw you in jail. Master found out about it. Found him and said, hey, you wicked servant. I forgave you everything. I forgave your whole debt. And you should have shown mercy to that fellow servant as I had mercy on you. And because of that, you read the rest of the parable, he threw him into prison to be tortured till his debt was paid. <laughs> Praise the Lord, he has shown us mercy. And we need to show mercy. Why? Because we're going to need mercy in the future. We're all going to need mercy in the future. See, the mercy you show will follow you. See, if you give it, you'll get it. If you don't give mercy, you're not going to get mercy. But it says, what's the result? Blessed are the merciful for what? They will be shown Mercy. So if we'll show mercy, we'll receive mercy in the present and in the future. And so that's important. And so we've got to show mercy because we're going to need it. Let me give you a fourth mark. We show mercy by helping those in need. We show mercy by helping those in need. And again, back to the Good Samaritan. What did he do? Scott, he helped him. He did... He showed him love in action. He did whatever he could to help and eat, relief this man's suffering. That's mercy. Uh, Ray Pritchard said like this. He says, I see the need. He recognized it. He, he says, I'm moved by the need. That was the motivation. And I moved to meet the need. That was the action. What's the golden rule? Luke 6, 31. It says, just as you want others to do for you, do the same or do unto others. Show that mercy. Help those in need so that you'll get mercy down the road. John Wesley said it like this. Do all the good you can by all the means you can in all the ways you can in all the places you can to all the people you can as long as you ever can. Saying do good. Show mercy. Do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. So that's the great thing about being part of the body of Christ. That's the great thing about Bethsaida. Y'all show mercy and you show love and compassion in action all the time. You say, what are you talking about? Well, let me give you a couple examples. Pretty simple examples because you do it all the time. Someone loses a loved one. What are you doing? You're there caring. Bring him by meals to help. Somebody been in the hospital? In need, can't do anything? They come home, what are you doing? Bring him by meals. Extending love and compassion and action. That's mercy. You do it all the time. You may have not thought of it like that, but that's what you're doing. You're showing mercy to your brothers and sisters in Christ because they're in a time of need. And that's awesome. 
And you're to be commended big time for it. Because there's many churches, let's be honest with you, that they don't do that. I'm just telling you, they don't do that. I don't know if they don't care about their brothers or sisters or they just, but you're to be commended. That's, you're you fulfilling that kingdom attitude when you do that because you're being merciful to your brother or sister Christ, helping them in their time of need. Because more than likely, you're liable to be on the other side sometime and that mercy will come back to you. Praise God. And see, the church is to be a place where people can meet God, find forgiveness, find mercy. It's not to be a judgmental place like, you can't come in here, you know. Uh, we know what you've done. Shoot, where would you want them to be? <laughs> My last church. The meanest man in the whole county got saved and was a member of our church. He was the only, only one left in a, in a major shootout in that whole county. Sometimes people say, well, do you know this guy? Yeah, he's a member of my church, and they about have a heart attack. <laughs> it's about showing mercy to people. And we do that, the fifth mark is by forgiving others. We show mercy by forgiving others. That's number five. Paul tells us in Colossians 3.13, let me just read it to us, bearing with one another, forgiving one another, if anyone has a grievance against one another, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you are also to forgive. Since God has forgiven you, you're to forgive others. Uh, since God has shown you mercy, you're to show mercy to others. Again, back to the church many times, and y'all are not like this, praise the Lord, but, uh, man, unfortunately, many churches are judgmental, mean, and harsh. You know what I'm saying? And they don't show mercy to others, and they don't show mercy to one another, and they don't forgive one another. Again, because I think sometimes the world comes in and you buy into that judgmental attitude. But we're to show mercy by forgiving others. I think one of the best illustrations of that is in the very first book of the Bible, in Genesis 50. You know the story, Joseph. He's been sold into slavery, been to prison, now he's second in charge. And he gets his brothers, long story short, his brothers come, all of his family, Jacob. Jacob passes away, and what do they think? Uh-oh. Since we sold our brother into slavery, now he's in charge. He's going to get what? Revenge. Because that's what our flesh, right? That's what we want. If we get, if we are not led by the Spirit, and that's the only way you live these kingdom attitudes, what do you want to do? I'm going to get him. I'm going to get my brothers. They sold me into slavery. They're going to get it. But look at what he says. So they sent this message to Joseph. Before he died, your father gave him a command. Verse 17, say this to Joseph. Please forgive your brother's transgression and their sin and the suffering they caused you. Therefore, please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when their message came to him. Verse 18 says, his brothers also came to him and bowed down before him and said what? We're your slaves. He says, you're not my slaves. If you read verse 20, he says, you meant, it, you meant it for evil. You planned all this for evil. But God meant it for good. For the survival and saving of many others. I mean, that's a beautiful picture of forgiveness. And mercy. He didn't have to extend mercy. He was second in charge of everything. In Egypt and all of pretty much. At that time in the known world, he would have been probably the second most powerful person. And he, they could have been his slaves, but he didn't show it. How do you and I show mercy? Well, you can forgive others. 
you sh can show compassion to those. You can share the gospel. You can pray for others. But let me get you to think about this one truth that, that God's just kind of gripped me with on this. And it's something to think about. Receive every person you meet as a person that God sent to you. Think about that. Receive every person that you meet as a person that God sent to you. Now you think about that. We've all not treated people the way they should be treated. Or we may have been like the Levite and the priest and we're like, we're going to walk on the other side and we're not going to have anything to do with you. Think about that. If someone comes into your life, God allow that person to walk in your life, whether it's school, your neighborhood, the doctor's office, waiting in the line for pharmacy, into your business. Every person that you meet is someone that God sent and allowed to cross your path for that day. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a convicting thought. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's convicting. Because you're like, Lord, I didn't treat all those the way I should, or maybe, Lord, I just ignored them. Or, Lord, again, the priest and the Levite might have thought, hey, that's a trap, and they're going to rob me. Because there's a lot of people got robbed on that road to Jericho. Or they may have thought, well, I don't have time. I got four more appointments, and it was inconvenient. And we've all done that. But may we be kind of like the young boy, and you may have heard the story. He went down to the local dollar store. His mom sent him down there to buy a loaf of bread. And he was gone longer than he should have been, and he got home, and you know what mom said. Where have you been? What have you been doing? Been worried sick about you. The boy said, well, there was a little boy with a broken bike. His bike had broke down, and he was crying. So I stopped to help him. His mother said, I didn't know you knew anything about fixing bikes. He says, I don't. I just stayed there and cried with him. So that's a picture, very simple picture of mercy, love, compassion, and action. That's mercy. And if you know Christ, you're a recipient, recipient of that mercy. And you ought to want to show that mercy to others. And we do it because why? Oh gosh, God is merciful. And because He's been merciful to us, we're to help those in need when we can. We're to forgive those like Joseph did. See, mercy, very simple. I like these definitions that God gives us that are simple because I can maybe remember it. It's just love and compassion in action. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just again thank You that you have shown us mercy. But Lord, there may be someone here today that's not experienced that mercy. There may be someone online that's not experienced that mercy. If you could say, Brad, I've never come to that place and received the mercy of God. I've never surrendered my life to Christ. I invite you to do that right now. If you're by yourself, you can talk to the Lord Allowed. If you're with a group, you can pray this silently, talk to God silently, He'll hear you. But you may just want to cry out to God right now and say, Hey, dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I've blown it. 
I've broken your laws, Lord. But God, I really do believe that you sent your son to be born of a virgin. He lived a perfect life. He died on the cross for my sins. He was buried in the tomb. And he rose on the third day. And he's alive and living today. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, right now, to come into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. And be my Lord, Master, and Savior from this moment on. In Jesus' name, amen. All eyes closed, nobody looking around. Anybody maybe pray that prayer with me? If you did, just kind of raise your hand. Anybody in the house? Okay. Christ followers. Anybody need prayer this morning? If you do, just kind of raise your hand. Anybody? Thank you. Lord, you see those hands? Lord, I pray that you'd be with those needs that they have, Lord. Lord, you are, you're the God of all mercies, Lord. And Lord, I pray you'd have mercy and you'd meet those needs in my brothers' and sisters' lives, Lord. Lord, forgive us when we don't receive people the way we should, Lord. Lord, forgive us when we just don't see people as your image bearers. But Lord, help us to show love and compassion in action. Lord, whoever you bring across our path in the days ahead, Lord, somehow remind us that you sent them across our path. And Lord, help us to show mercy and point them to the God of all mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to have a time of invitation. You may want to come and pray. Maybe you've got a burden. Maybe you're praying for someone. I don't know. But whatever God's speaking to you, again, you may have burdens, and you may just want to come and lay them at the altar. So I'm going to ask you to stand. The band's going to come and lead us in this time of worship. And just encourage you to listen to God. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. You are the Potter. I am the clay. Oh. Me and maybe this is what I do. Change my heart, oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. Change my heart, oh Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. You are the pardon. I am the play. Oh, me and me. This is what I do. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like. Love you folks. Again, again, thank you all for the way you do show mercy. You do show love and compassion and action when there is a need. And we, we do thank you 
uh, as a pastor, thank you so much for how you do that and how you serve that way. Uh, that is a pleasure to see and uh, grateful to see. Amen? Amen? All right, students, let me make this one thing. I did mention in class, but parents may have not heard it. Move this year will be December 29th and 30th. It'll be at Wild Adventures in Valdosta. If you're interested in going, please let us know. We're going to try to get those tickets ordered this week, uh, but it'll be a two-day thing, and we'll get you more details on costs and all that, but we'll make it very affordable for you. So, Okay? Amen. Church, thank you, Brother Brad. Amen. You are my joy, you are my song, you are the well, the one I'm drawing from. You are my refuge, my whole life long, where else could I go? Surely my God is the strength of my soul. Your love defends me, your love defends me, and when I feel like I'm all alone, your love defends me, your love defends me. That's right, church. Day after day, night after I will remember you with me in this fight. Although the battle it rages on, the war's already won. I know the war's already won. Surely, my God is the strength of my soul. Your love defends me, your love defends me, and when I feel like I'm all alone, your love defends me, your love defends me, we sing how. Your love defends me, your love defends me, and when I feel like I'm all alone, your love defends me, your love defends me, come on, surely my God is the strength of my soul, your love defends me, your love defends me, and Your love defends me. We sing hallelujah. You're my portion, my salvation. Hallelujah. You're Have a great Sunday, church.